Uh, welcome, everyone. Thanks so much uh, to, for coming to listen to our presentation about the Work Education Centre. Um, you'll find on your tables we've left um, our packs, our info packs, with lots of information about the Work Education Centre. Uh, my role at the presentation today is just to give you initially a brief overview of the history of the Work Education Centre. Um, which started and was established in 1977. So we're coming up to our 40th anniversary in a few years' time. And um, it was established by John Dow. John Dow was a well-known uh, businessman in the local area. His company, Dow Industries, produced um, stainless steel window frames. You may remember it, not sure. John had a son, Peter, who had um, a disability. He had Prader-Willi syndrome. And John, in helping his son, Peter, became aware of the limitations that were available for people with disabilities to move into open employment. He saw that there was um, very limited services that were available for training for people to move into employment. And he saw that there was a gap to establish a program here in the north of Melbourne that provided some formal vocational training for people to move into open employment. Services were limited and mainly consisted of sheltered employment um, where people moved into a service and they had to sit in, uh, fit into the service that was provided rather than the other way around. So in 1977, John established the Work Education Program, and it was then at the Preston TAFE campus in Albert Street, which is no longer there. Um, very soon afterwards, a very similar program was established at the Gordon um, in Geelong, also established by a family where who's, um, one of their children had um, a disability. So the pattern was the same, that these wonderful programs were um, initiated by, driven by families where their own son or daughter had a disability, but the options were really limited. And what they wanted was an opportunity for people with disabilities to improve their lives. John Dale and Annie Russell also were the co-authors of the Certificate One in Work Education curriculum. And that was a really important step because it created accredited training for people with disabilities at TAFE. They were really trailblazers in this field. And the Certificate One in Work Education, which they co-authored, is still the foundation of re of uh, versions that have been revised uh, subsequently, that have been re-accredited. So it was an incredible, um, it was an incredible um, initiative on their behalf. I think that that probably just gives you a brief overview of the Work Education Centre. Um, the courses are a Certificate One in Work Education Foundation General, uh, Work Preparation Course, Certificate One in Work Education Foundation Ignition Theatre, that's a unique course in Australia, and Kathy's going to talk to you about those courses. Certificate one in hospitality kitchen operations, um, which is also a wonderful one year course that we offer. And certificate one in transition um, education, which is a course that I'm going to briefly outline to you now. Uh, the certificate one in transition um, um, education is designed to introduce people to a range of post-course options. And the focus is on developing a learning plan and identifying people who can form a support network for a person to achieve the goals that they have set. Students participate in voluntary work. They extend their independent and travel skills. And there's a strong community participation um, component in the course. Students can do the course over one year, which is coming to TAFE uh, four and a half to five days a week. Over two years, 
coming to TAFE three days a week for each year one and then year two of the course. And we also offer the certificate one uh, in transition uh, for part-time students. So we have quite a large cohort of students who are still attending school and coming to us one day a week. Um, so they're the ways that we, could, that we deliver the certificate one in transition ed. Um, students, after they have completed the course, um, can move on to do other TAFE courses. They can be referred to specialist employment services. Um, they may uh, like to do a program in the community, for example, a neighbourhood house or a learning centre. Students may also participate in recreation and leisure programs in the community. And students just generally have a very significant um, enhancement of their independence. We run a couple of link programs or partnership programs where the certificate one in transition underpins um, those programs. We have a program called Create Your Own Future, which is a program that we've, it's a third year that we're delivering it. And we have developed that program in partnership with the NDCO, which is the National Disability Coordination Officer Program. Um, and that's half a day a week. And the focus of that program is it's for students who are still attending school, who are either in year 10, 11 or 12, and come to us on a Wednesday afternoon, one o'clock till four o'clock. It's a program where the focus is on career planning, preparing stu or giving uh, students the skill to find work or to explore uh, further pathways once, once they have left school. Um, also, students uh, mainly focus on experiential learning, uh, doing projects, going on excursions to visit different workplaces and um, community programs. And students, there's really this very strong focus on career development, reflection and goal setting. This year we've introduced a program that we have uh, customised for Rossbourne School. It's a school in Hawthorne and students come to us one day a week to do a program called Step Up to TAFE. And for that particular program, the emphasis is on creative arts, communication skills. The st uh, students are working on a Step Up to TAFE newsletter. So it's really extending um, students' awareness of what may be possible at TAFE. This year we're also um, running two TAFE taster programs that are also using um, a unit from the transition program. And the TAFE taster program is offered twice this year and it's four consecutive Thursdays in May and then in August. And students can select from one of three subjects one is Master Chef Hospitality, uh, Trades and Creative Arts. And there are staff here from schools where last year they did refer to TAFE Taster and students have then gone on to do one of our full-time courses. This year we're also introducing two TAFE Discovery Days, which are free events, one on the 11th of July and one on the 3rd of October which is offered during the school holidays, and students can come just for one day to try out TAFE. And that was hugely successful last year. So the transition course is one of our very versatile courses, and it's really the aim is to develop a person's confidence, self-esteem and independence. Um, the work education course, so it's the certificate one in work education, and it actually has two streams. The first stream being a generalist, which is a course basically if you don't know what you want to do. So it could be any vocation or unaware of anything, and we explore different vocations for them and get them ready for work. So they do different subjects like job options, where we go to different industries and, ex and have a look and see what they're all about. Um, they practice their interview skills and um, have an opportunity to see what it's all about. Then you've, we've got the stream, they're basically the same, the difference being the Ignition Theatre, it's mostly to do with performing arts. That's the industry they're focusing on. They do everything else, which is the same, but that's the difference. They're spe uh, specifically 
performing arts so they know what they want. Um, now they also do work experience and that's a large component of the course. It's about 300 hours which Gabby will talk about in a minute and they get another opportunity there to explore what they want to do and it's heavily um, monitored, so constant phone calls and everything and visits. We also run the certificate one in um, hospitality kitchen operations, which is kitchen hand. And again, that's very specific in the kitchen industry. And that's predominantly two and a half days a week. And they spend two days in a kitchen learning those skills. One of those days is actually, they run out of here and they run the conferences, the kitchen downstairs. And another day they run the, um, what we call, where you had lunch today, the restaurant. So they do that another day. So it's live environment, live customers. And then there's a half a day of consolidating everything into theory. Um, now, the, the pretty much it on those two courses. I wanted to point out that the planning process for career planning starts from the very first time we make contact and we get to see that person to the very end where we exit them post TAFE um, to their next option, whether it be work or further ed or whatever it might be. And in between the beginning and end, we have a very strong partnership and with parents and other people such as employers or um, it might be DHS or depending on the circumstance of the individual. So I'll leave it to Gabby now because she'll explain into much more detail exactly how it all works. Our philosophy at the Work Education Centre is that it takes a whole village to raise a child. And that, that's from the ancient you know, African tribes, that we don't work in isolation and a student does not work in isolation. A student works with a whole team of people and it's made up of um, their support network. And that, that may be um, their family, their friends, um, people we refer them to. And we involve everybody in every decision that's made um, and the student facilitates where we go with, with what they do in terms of their goals. Um, so we look at person-centred planning. Now I'm sure you all, most of you know all about all, all the careers, different theories. We find the person-centred planning is the most effective for our students. Um, and we talk, we've talked about the support network and um, how important it is to um, involve everybody within the planning so that there's an ownership as well and that the person, when they move on from being at TAFE, feel that there's a, a, the transition's been made to the next step for them. Um, um, all right. I think we've done that. Now, if we look at the journey someone might take when they come to TAFE, it starts with someone like um, your guys at school. Now, I know we've got a few people in the audience who we've, we've dealt with over, over the years and we've got some of your students now, actually, as well. Um, so it starts with um, the career planner at, at your school talking about what options are. Um, they then might come to an info session or an expo that we might have, or it might be a phone call. We get lots of parents ringing up wanting to come and have a talk to us and we, we're happy to see anybody during the course of the year and talk about options. Now, it might not be the best thing to come to TAFE and that's something that we'll talk to them about other ideas as well. Um, you know, what are their options out there? What, what's, what's the best fit for, for your student or for your child? Um, there's an app, they do an application and then we bring the student in for an interview. With the interview, we, bring, we ask the student to bring a family member or a, a support worker, um, and often the teacher as well. We then timetable the individual um, into our program. So it won't be a case that every subject is only run on a certain day. So if someone's working or got other options on another day or can only come for half days because they get tired in the afternoon or their medication. We will suit their timetable to fit the person. Sometimes it's very tricky. Kathy and I do the timetable at the end of the year and it's like a Sudoku puzzle. It's sort of, we've got it all over the wall and people come and have a look because it's, it it's like a juggling act. Our classes are, we're very lucky, we've got a ratio of about one to 10. Um, and it's very individualised um, from the timetabling to what sort of work they do in class. We've got some students who have done a VCAL program. We've, done, we've got some students whose reading and writing is not their strength. So we really cater for an individual um, approach. 
the students come and enrol. We then have an initial meeting. So each student's got a case manager, just like a homeroom sort of person, and they, they're the person that will work through their goals and be the support person for them at TAFE. And that's a very, very special relationship that that student has with the teacher, but also the teacher has with the support people as well. So that there's constant conversation happening and they, they feel that there's nothing's going to sort of slip through the system. Because TAFE is a big, it's a, it's a big change for students coming from a school where some of them have been there for 12 years, coming into a very big TAFE system. Um, then they have their orientation and induction, and then we commence an individualised program. So with the person-centred planning, we, do, we really, really look at the student being the core, and all the other things are part of it as well. So their goals are part of the, of the person, their exit plan, their practical placement, their employability skills or core skills, their interpersonal and communication skills, their social skills community and partners and their and outreach, health services, alumni when they finish TAFE. Um, and we'll talk about some of those um, in a little while, but um, it's really important that the person is seen as a centre and that everything else is part of the person as well. Um, so this just gives an example of, and Julie's spoken about where students come from and how they might come to us and part-time and full-time. So we get students from special schools, we get students from mainstream schools, we get other referrals such as DHS, um, specialist employment agencies, MIPS, doctors, self, we used to get Centrelink, that sort of thing. Um, they can then come to us in many different ways. They can come as a taster, they can come part-time or full-time, they can come um, full-time in either of those courses. Um, depending on what course they do, the um, exit point may be different. If a student's doing a transition program, they might not be looking at, at employment yet. They may move into a community-based program, voluntary work, further education, uh, employment service, to consolidate some of the skills. Often um, students who have done Certificate 1 in transition, who are generally the ones who have just come from school, move, might move into the Certificate 1 in work education, where they really look at consolidating those work skills and developing more skills. Um, so I just want to talk to you about a case study. So Alex, Alex came to us from a mainstream school. Um, he came to us uh, quite a few years ago, probably um, about four or five years ago. And he was a young man with, or um, well, he is a young man on the autistic spectrum. He was, um, you know, he hadn't had a good time at school been bullied, didn't have any friends, but he was very oppositional when he came to us. And he started in the Certificate 1 in Transition Education. And basically he knew everything. He didn't need to be told anything, he knew it. And it was very hard for him to get pen to paper. And he ruffled people's feathers and he was, he was difficult to work with um, initially because he didn't really want to be there. He didn't see himself either as having a disability and didn't identify himself um, with, with a group either. Um, so through very, I think he was only, did he start part time, Alex? So Alex started part time as well and eventually he, he felt that he was um, <coughs> being able to make some achievements. He was able to, to actually um, do the work and he started to develop a friendship circle. And um, he then came to us and did Certificate 1 in transition full time. But he still sort of felt that he was probably um, more mainstream than in the work education centre. So he moved into um, a certificate two in office admin. We don't have certificate twos anymore, unfortunately, at TAFE. But um, he moved into it and um, he, was, he was quite a capable young man. Um, academically, he really was, um, you know, he was able to do all the work. And, um, but the thing that he found in the certificate two in office admin was that um, it was a very big environment. He didn't fit. He couldn't find any friends. He didn't know how to ask for help, and he was he struggled a little bit. So, with our support, because he was still on campus, um, he managed to. Because if a student moves into another course, they get um, disability liaison officer working with them. He was able to um, pass that certificate, but he really thought probably the best place for him is to come back to us again and do a certificate one in work education. 
Um, so he came back and did a certificate one in Workhead. And as part of his practical placement, he um, wanted to go to an office environment. He's really fantastic data entry. So he, we got him some work at, or some practical placement at Hume City Council. And they, they loved him, they thought he was fantastic and they wanted to employ him. So he, um, we then referred him, Ollie was still with us, to an employment agency who worked um, and developed the traineeship for him. And Alex was working three days a week last year. But Alex wasn't quite ready to leave us yet because he felt he still needed our support and wanted that contact. So he came back to us one day a week just, to, um, just so he could be with us. He wasn't probably gaining a lot. He didn't get a certificate from coming to us, but just having him still come and him knowing that we were there if he needed us was really important for that transition and that exit for Alex. Um, and then at the end of last year, we said to him, what do you want to do? Do you want to come back next year? And he said, oh, I don't know. I'm probably working a bit, but he decided he was going to come back again. So we enrolled him and um, just for, I think, you know, it wasn't, it was half a day, wasn't it? And then at the beginning of this year, he came and saw to us and he said, you know, I think I'm ready to leave. I think I've got, I'm, I'm happy now, I'm comfortable, I'm ready to go, but can I ring you and, and, or can I pop in and see you? And it was a really fantastic journey for Alex because this was a young man who was so oppositional when he came to us and didn't need us to finally making a decision that he was ready to move on to his next step and he felt supported and we knew he was supported um, and, um, and it, was, it was wonderful. So it was, that was a great journey for Alex and there's lots of students who were like that. Um, this is an example of another young man, Michael, who came from a special school. Um, he started, he did the um, check out TAFE Taster program with us to start with as part of being at school as well. Then he came to um, full time in Certificate 1 in Workhead. Now Michael really wanted to um, be a tradie, but um, his maths reading and writing and numeracy wasn't, wasn't really fantastic. So we got him a work experience in the plastering department. We find that plastering is probably one of the easier trades in terms of maths. Um, and um, we said to the, the guy there at um, plastering, I said, you know, what do you think? He said, look, he could possibly do a prayer, you know, maybe, but I don't think he'd cope doing it in the full 16 weeks. That's too intense for him. He probably, you know, it'd be too much. I said, well, can we offer him something else? So what we set up for him was he stayed with us for a year and then one week every month he would go to do the plastering, he'd do a component of the plastering and then he'd come back to us. And by the end of the year he'd got his certificate two in his um, plastering, plus he'd also got his certificate one in work education. He also got offered a, um, an apprenticeship, which was fantastic, got picked up by a, um, a plastering company and we moved him, we transitioned him into a disability um, employment service who then took on the support for, um, for Michael. Um, so people with disabilities um, have a lot of barriers um, in accessing courses, in accessing support and accessing employment. Um, you know, if you look at the statistics, um, Australia is not doing so well in terms of um, the poverty line, but um, also with um, what's being offered to people with disabilities. We work in the northern suburbs, so we, we, see, a lot of, we see a lot of people who are incredibly disadvantaged. Um, and it's also changed the way that um, employers are looking for, for um, workers as well. Um, you don't need to know that you need to be able to do five different things now instead of just the one thing. Um, all our jobs are changing and um, it impacts on people with disabilities because the entry level jobs are now, um, are now going. Um, 20 years ago we might have had someone who would work on a hand line in a factory. Now you need to be able to work on the hand line and plus drive the forklift and it's, and it's hard. It's really hard for us to be able to find appropriate workplaces um, that students are going to be able to find employment or, or um, develop training skills. Um, so just a list of di the different barriers that we, that we face working with people with disabilities and you, you would all find that as well in your job that um, there's um, the job market's changed, um, transport can be very difficult for people with disabilities, um, maybe the, the cost of, of living, um, 
maybe being on a disability support pension is difficult or maybe even getting on a disability support pension is very difficult for, for students now. Um, the lack of available information about careers, um, you know, the lack of resilience, self-belief, confidence, and also confidence and self-belief of the parents in their, in their, student, in their children as well. Um, the negative attitudes and misconceptions about disability held by employers and the wider community um, often ring up and um, ask people for work experience and they go, oh, that'd actually be unsafe. I'm sorry, we can't have them here. They might, there might be an accident. What are we going to do? Um, so we've actually come up with a flyer which says, uh, it's a bit hard to see this, it's called The Right Worker For You. And it talks about the statistics and the benefits of, of actually employing somebody with a disability. And, and much to people's, um, uh, you know, they, they don't know that people with disabilities have a far, a far less likely to have accidents at work. Um, they're far less likely to have sick days. Um, and it is actually a statistic from the, um, the Victorian government or the Australian government. Um, and we find that we have students who have worked in their workplaces for 20 years because they don't like change. Once they get a job, they stay there and they become incredibly reliable workers um, and they are able to do their job, come in and do their job and, um, and have a really good work history. Um, some of the positive things that we do at, at the Work Education Centre that helps to develop a student's career development and um, move them into the next step is that we, we do do a lot of work experience. The way we do our work experience is that we have probably about 150 students, so I think, and they all do 300 hours of work experience. Now, some of them do it in one year, some of them do it in two years. So generally, we work out that it's probably about three or 400 different placements we're finding in a year. And we've got our favourites that we always ask, and often they don't say no, but we also have to find new workplaces. And, it's, and that is very difficult, because we need to be able to know that the workplace that we're sending our student to is going to be able to accommodate a specific, specific needs, but also to be able to um, you know, give them some real work skills. We don't want them to be babysat. We want real workplaces. So we spend a lot of time on the phone. We spend a lot of time going out, driving, popping into places, seeing whether they're suitable workplaces, whether they're going to be supportive. And um, so the process that we do at the Work Education Centre is that um, we have four practical placement staff. We all, we ring the workplaces. We organise the interviews for them. We sort of sit, well, I'm in the process of sitting down with the student, working out what they want to do. And we always say, okay, if we can't find that workplace, what's the next idea? What will you talk, what will you think about next? Um, and so we, 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 we sit down and really talk about it. We do a, um, a skills analysis and work out where that student thinks that they would enjoy doing work experience. Um, so once we've organised a work experience, we then take the student to the interview. So we drive them to the interview. Um, it's usually a week or two before their placement. We make sure that the student knows their hours, what they're going to wear. And we also talk to the student about the fact that we need to talk to the employer about some specific medical issues or any specific needs that they might have in the workplace. And we ask the student to sign a um, authority to release and obtain information so that they're okay with us talking to the bosses. Because it's really, it's not fair for anybody to send someone to a placement without them knowing what to expect, but also not setting the student up for failure either. Um, we get a lot of students who look very mainstream. Um, and to an employer, they would look like any other teenage kid coming from the street or coming from any school doing work experience. However, sometimes they have really specific needs and um, I had one young man last year who, who he's, looks very mainstream, lovely looking boy, very sort of emo looking, you know, the goatee and all that sort of stuff. And I sent him to Coles, he really wanted to do work experience at Coles. And, I, I, and Coles is a very big organisation, so you're not guaranteed that the person you speak to on the phone is the person that you meet when you get there and or is the person who's going to actually support them in the place. So when I got there, I explained again about this young man's um, specific needs. And um, when he was there, after a couple of days, I popped in and saw him. And they said, oh, we're really surprised that um, 
he'll just stand there and he won't ask for work. You know, he doesn't know what to do. And I said, I said, look, I've, I spoke to the boss about this. And it's just really difficult sometimes to disseminate that information and make sure because it wasn't his fault that he just didn't know. But everyone's so busy and sometimes the message doesn't get out in those big organisations. So it's really, really important to make sure that you're, that you're reasonably honest with a, with a boss about what the expectations are and what, and what you think the limitations might be with a student going to, into a workplace. Um, it's really important. Networking is incredibly important. Um, you know, I will be at my children's soccer events and I'll be saying, oh, what do you do for a living? And, you know, I'll, and, and people will take them on work experience and it's, and it's fantastic. It's, um, it's great. When you start telling people what you do, people are really fascinated because generally in, you know, society now, you know, everyone knows someone who's got a child with a disability or you may have someone in your family or the person next door. So people are actually willing to help and, um, and do something to support you if you, if you, you know, start talking. So it's really important to use your networks, use your students' networks as well. They might know somebody. Um, and it's really important to give them as many opportunities as you can to develop those employability skills, to learn how to talk to someone on their first day or how to, what to talk about at lunch break or how to ask for more work. Um, and it's just practice and practice and practice all the time. Um, oh, so some of our guys are working students. Look, we get students who want to do factory work. We get students who want to work in offices, um, cinemas. Um, you know, some of it's grandiose plans that we need to sort of pare back a bit. Um, and, um, you know, we, we find that employers that used to take our students are now going, no, sorry, no work experience at all, because sometimes it is too hard for workplaces. And I, it's really, really hard. Um, Bunnings has always been a fantastic employer of our students. And I recently rang up and every Bunnings in the northern suburbs says, no, not taking anyone on work experience at the moment. I went, oh, dear me, what am I going to do? So we had to go, we had to find somewhere else. Um, so, you know, the landscape is constantly changing. Um, all right, so that's just talking about students and building their confidence and all that sort of stuff. Parents as Partners model. This is a really, really fantastic program that we've offered now um, for two years, is it, Jules? This is the third year coming up. And this is talking about the support network. Parents are the best support person for their children. They know their children the best. And when students leave TAFE, it's great to know that the parents know how to advocate for their student and know what's out there. So we started um, the Parents as Partners model um, two years ago. And it's run over four sessions in the evening. Um, and we get guest speakers such as Centrelink, DES providers, employers, past parents, the NDCO, to come and talk to parents and tell them their experiences, what's out there, what are you entitled to, what, what can you do to help your student to develop their career. Um, and um, it's really also an important thing for parents to be able to have the support of other parents. Um, coming to TAFE is very different from going to school where they've gone, they've probably been in the same class with students and they know, parents know each other. Coming to TAFE they don't know each other and there's not the opportunities to build those relationships and the supports. Um, we had a parent pop in today from a school who was just signing up for the TASTER program and she was talking about the um, changes for DHS and I said, oh look, there's a parent here that I know works really well with DHS. It's probably a bit of a serial pest as well, but you know, sometimes you need to be able to get on the phone and know what you're asking for. And for another parent to be able to tell a parent their experiences of how to do things and what you're entitled to, I think it's really, it's been really, really important. So the first year we ran it, how many did we get, Jules? I think we had about uh, 45 to 50, depending on anyone. Yep. And then the second year when we offered it, we, we actually got 80 people who were interested. So that just shows you that it's out there. People want and need the support to know how to help their children as well. Um, we, because we're in the northern suburbs, we get people who are from non-English speaking backgrounds as well, and that can be very difficult for them as well. They don't understand how to deal with Centrelink, so we get someone from Centrelink to talk to them about what they're entitled to and how to how to go about accessing that. Um, 
And this year, again, I think we've got seven, uh, 80 people who are interested in doing it. Um, and if it's anything that you're interested in, in learning more about, you know, you can give us a call. Our details are there. We're happy to come and talk to you. We're actually even um, thinking about running um, workshops like a fee-for-service type workshop if you want to learn more about it, if your school's interested in developing some skills as well. Um, I'll tell you about our website in a minute. Um, so that is very small, okay? <laughs> um, I can't actually see that from where I am. So I can assure you when you look at it on the computer, it's better, all right? So um, that's something you probably want to have a look at when you get home. It talks about the... Um, the pathways for students and we've covered a bit of that but we also look at exit planning so when a student is ready to leave TAFE we just don't say goodbye and you know good luck we spend a lot of time planning for their exit and helping them to plan for their next steps no student leaves TAFE without a plan and the plan involves um, referring them to the next step referring them to employment agencies referring them if they've already got a job um, referring, making sure that the employment agency is there to support them, knowing that the parents or the, or the support workers knowing what the next step is for them. So they, we spend a lot of time doing that. We look at their goals and where they want to be and it might not just be um, in terms of their career path, it's, it's their whole of life so it might be linking them in with a footy, footy team or a, fo a local footy club or knitting club or whatever it may be, it's, it's accessing lots and lots of things in the community and we make sure that when a student leaves us that they leave with a plan and that they know what the plan is and we often get them at the beginning of the year ringing up and saying, look, I'm not quite sure what I'm doing, can you help me with things? And we, we're still there to help. We, still, we help after years and years. Between, we worked out between the three of us, we've probably got 75 years of experience at the in MIT. It's embarrassing. Julie's got most of it. But, uh, <laughs> but yeah, actually, Julie, we just talked about the Rossborn program and she said, should I mention this or is it embarrassing? But one of the... Um, students that Julie taught, her daughter's now coming to us at Rossbourne and that's not unusual. We've seen that a, a fair bit and it's just, it's wonderful to see but we know, we go, oh yes I remember your mum and it's, we've been there a very long time, we've had a lot of experience and, and people know where to find us and they always come back, always come back. Um, now on the bottom there is our new website. Um, it's just been updated actually, it's really good, it's got lots and lots of different things, it's got videos, it's got testimonials, it's got um, areas for if you want us to come out and talk to your school or talk to any parents, please let them know that the website's there. Um, and um, as I said, you know, if there's any, any more information anybody wants about anything, um, please don't hesitate to speak to us.